Welcome back to Book Break. I am very excited about today's video, which is about one of my favourite book series of all time, Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshigazu Kawaguchi, which is now officially three books long. The third book in this series is finally out, and look how stunning they all look together. These books are so beloved by me and by many, many people all over the world. We get to read them in English because they have been translated into English by Jeffrey Trusolo, and thank goodness they have been because these books bring me so much joy. So Before the Coffee Gets Cold is about a time-travelling cafe in Tokyo, and so inspired by this, I am going to take my books and take you on a little tour of Japanese cafes in London. Unfortunately, I don't like coffee, so I'm going to try something a little bit different in every cafe that we go to. And along the way, I'm going to tell you everything that you need to know about this series, and hopefully convince you to pick it up and love it just as much as I do. So let's go. So I started my day going to Sakurado, which is this beautiful Japanese patisserie. It's got the most gorgeous looking array of cakes you have ever seen. Also a massive selection of bubble tea. Bubble tea is actually originally a Taiwanese drink, but I have heard it is huge in Japan and they had such a big selection that I had to try it out. So while I'm drinking that, let me tell you about the first book in this series, Before the Coffee Gets Cold. This book is where we first go to the cafe, Cafe Funiculi Funicula, which is actually named after a Neapolitan song. So a few key people that you need to know about in the cafe. Kazu, the waitress, and she is the only one who has the ability to send people back in time. Her cousin, Nagare, who owns the cafe, and his wife, Kay. And the most notable thing about the cafe is, of course, the fact that it has the ability to send people back in time. But one of the most fun, whimsical things about this story is quite how many rules there are about time travelling. It is very, very precise. So in order to go back in time, you must be sitting in one particular seat in the cafe. But the problem is that seat is almost always taken by a ghost. The ghost of a woman who sits there all day long reading her book. You have one chance every day to get to that seat, and that is when she gets up once a day to go to the loop. So once you've got into the seat, it's still not simple, the rules continue. You can only travel through time by Kazu the waitress pouring you a cup of coffee. Once you're back in time, you cannot leave your seat. If you stand up, you'll instantly be propelled back to the present day. And for that reason, you can only meet people back in time who have actually visited the cafe. However hard you try while back in time, you will not be able to change the present. You cannot stop things from happening that you know already happened. That's a rule that a lot of these customers find pretty frustrating. And perhaps most importantly of all, there is a time limit. So I mentioned that your time traveling through time starts when Kazu, the waitress, pours you a cup of coffee. Well, you must return to the present before your coffee gets cold. So this book is made up of four different vignettes of characters who want to travel through time for various reasons. There's Fumiko who wants to redo the last conversation she had with her ex-boyfriend, even though she knows she can't change the outcome of their present relationship. There's an absolutely heart-wrenching story of a man with Alzheimer's who wants to go back and give his wife a letter, and you just try making it through that one with dry eyes. One of the cafe regulars, Hirai, wants to go back and meet with her sister who died in a car accident, tortured by the fact that she had refused to see her on the last time that she visited. And the final story is about Kay, who I already mentioned is the wife of the cafe owner. She doesn't want to travel to the past, she wants to travel to the future for another tear-jerking reason that I won't spoil for you. Well, my tea was already cold before I got started, but nonetheless, I think it is time that I get out of here. On to the next cafe and the next book. Next on my journey, I stopped off at the very cool Cafe Kitsune, which is a Japanese-French fusion cafe in Belgravia, famed not only for their Japanese sweet treats, but also for their uniquely fluffy sandos for lunch. So of course I got myself one of those. I can see what the fuss is about. This is delicious. So while I eat that, I'm gonna tell you about the sequel, Before the Coffee Gets Cold, Tales from the Cafe. 
I loved the first book so much and I did not realize there were going to be more in this series. So when the sequel got announced, honestly, you could have heard my shrieking from Japan. In this book, we go back to the cafe seven years after the events of the original. And as well as all of our favorite characters, we have a new regular character, Miki, who is the daughter of cafe owners Nagare and Kei. She is quite the character and she is desperate to take over the task of pouring the time traveling coffee. And as well as meeting Miki, we also get to learn a lot more about the ghost of the woman who sits in the time traveling chair. We get to see some of her backstory and also learn about her real connection to the cafe. We also learn even more rules about how time travel works. So we learn, for example, that you can only travel in time once and once only. While you're there, you can take pictures, you can exchange presents, but you can't keep your coffee warm no matter how hard you try. It is going to get cold and you do have to return to the present before it gets cold. I cannot stress this enough. And of course we get four new stories about characters who want to travel in time. So there's the man who wants to go back and meet his old friend who died 22 years earlier and whose orphan daughter he has been raising ever since. There's a man who has given up on life in the present and thinks that the past might just hold the answer. There's a man who's been given just six months left to live and he wants to go into the future to make sure that the love of his life is going to be happy. And finally, there's a detective who wants to give his wife the birthday present he never had the chance to give her. So as you can imagine, a lot more tears to come in this book. But now, at last, my most anticipated book of the year, the third book in the series, is finally out. But this time, everything is about to change because this book is set at a whole new cafe. So let's head to my third cafe of the day and I'll tell you everything you need to know. To celebrate this book, I stopped off for one final treat at WA Cafe, which is a gorgeous cafe in Covent Garden. And I don't like coffee, so I couldn't get coffee, even though that would be perfectly themed for this series. But I did get a matcha tiramisu, so that is coffee adjacent. So we have come to the third book in the series, Before Your Memory Fades. And this is the longest book in the series, so you get a lot of extra time spent in this world, which is really fun. Once again, we have jumped in time by seven years, and lots of things have changed. It is now Kazu's daughter who is pouring the time-traveling coffee. She is this child prodigy called Sachi, who has read more than most of us already, and she's only seven years old. And also, we are set in a whole new cafe, in a whole new city. We are no longer in Tokyo, but in Hakudate at Cafe Donna Donna. Right from the very beginning, in the very first scene, we get to hear the other half of a phone call that we first read about all the way back in book one. It was a really fun little surprise. I was not expecting that little twist. If you do decide to jump straight into book three, it will all make sense, don't worry. But if you have read all three, it's a really satisfying moment. And another lovely moment for the longtime fans, right at the end of this book there is a little cameo that really made me smile I'm not going to give you any more hints about that of course we also get four new time travel stories and this time we get some that are a little bit different like a woman who wants to time travel for revenge that's the first time we've heard that kind of story and a missing man who shows up at the cafe of course there are also the classic tearjerkers in here like a young woman with a terminal illness who just wants her older sister to be happy after she dies and the final story in this book involves characters you've been getting to know throughout the rest of the book so far, and I did not see where that one was going. There's a really cool thread running throughout this book where Sachi, the child prodigy I told you about, is reading this philosophy book that asks you to consider what you'd do in various situations if the world was ending the next day. And so it's really fun as you read, getting to actually contemplate what you do in those situations while watching the characters think about it as well. And of course, the book ends up being tied into the story. Needless to say, this book surpassed all of my hopes and is just wonderful. But now it is time to drink up before my not exactly coffee gets cold and head home. So I hope you enjoyed touring some Japanese cafes with me today and are now fully inspired to pick up these books. All three of the books are linked in the description box below so you can click through and buy them. I will also leave links below to all of the cafes that I visited if you are coming to London and you want to go and check them out. Sadly, none of them sent me back in time, but they did have delicious food, so I do recommend that you pay them a visit. And finally, I will also link here to a video I made in the past of other Japanese book recommendations. So do click through and browse that one, and I'll see you next time.